Well, the 2018 draft is in the rearview mirror, and already we have the post-draft power rankings. It makes sense since things change uh, via free agency and then again you after the rankings. draft. You love these rankings. I love them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, paid him, we paid him to say that, that Bill Bullitt. You can imagine he's... He Nobody's played them. anybody yet, have they? <laughs> All right, listen, Bill, but for the sake of mm -hmm. argument, here they are as we look at the top ten, and of course noticeable in this... You know, we don't have to go out a long limb here. The Eagles and Patriots, the two Super Bowl teams, are at the top. However, Diana, yes. do you agree? Would you flip them? Would you move them? What would you do? Well, I love getting under Bill's skin. So I'm going to flip <laughs> the Patriots and the Eagles. I know that the Eagles beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. That's clear, and we haven't played a game since then. But I look at it like this, and Teddy knows. There is no, no team really better than looking or not looking back than the New England Patriots. That's true, yes. Then you also look at the key pieces that they have returning for them this season, right? They've got Bill Belichick back. They got Tom Brady. They got Gronk. They got Josh McDaniels. They got all the key pieces returning. And if there's one thing New England has proved is that they don't need much to be successful at this point in terms of free agency and drafting. They have the formula that works. It's worked for the last 10 seasons, which is why I think that the Patriots are going to come out on top over the Eagles. While I also think that the Eagles, while they don't, have a quarterback controversy. They don't. They could potentially have one. Let's say Carson Wentz doesn't come back healthy and Nick Foles is in there getting the start and he's successful and we're looking at week four, week five, and the Eagles are, let's say, undefeated. Then what? Ooh, I will say they have a backup quarterback who was the Super Bowl MVP, but, you know, we're, this, is, this is conjecture. It's good problems. It's, it's, good a good, problem. it's a good problem to have, and I will also agree with this. New England is certainly the model of consistency. I'm glad we're both over here. I know. I figured you might gonna be. Tell you, we're going to tell yeah. you why the Eagles need to stay up there at number one. The world champion, of course, has not done anything to get dropped down. Any, any less any, champion. Any, any less <laughs> champion. They are, to me, they are the best team in the National Football League coming back next year because of who they are, the coaching staff in another year, Carson Wentz, Nick Foles, that motivation by your quarterback. What they have is rare right now because what they have is a franchise quarterback in Carson Wentz and he had, no, he had little part of that championship that they had last year. So he is 100% motivated not only to be back week one, but be back in a way that everyone will see him as he plays. And he wants to make them forget about Nick Foles as, as much as that sounds. I know Nick Foles and him have a great relationship. They support each other. But Carson Wentz wants to show that it's his football team. You have a motivated quarterback, which is something rare for a returning Super Bowl champion. Such a good point, if you think about it, and I did not, is that the Super Bowl hangover, if you will, almost doesn't apply here, or at least not to the quarterback, because he oh. wasn't a part of it. If anything, he's yep. motivated to show that he could have done it as well. If it doesn't apply to the victor, or does apply to the victor, rather, why wouldn't it apply to the loser, for goodness sake? Well, it, 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 they're, they're again Because good they're point, good though. at forgetting. They're good at putting in the... I would, listen, I'm going to go with experience at the quarterback position and at the head coach spot to give them the edge over... Philly. Michael Bennett's a good player. They brought him, too, to help out. They got Dallas Goddard, the good tight end from San Diego State University. He's going to help also, out also with Zach Ertz and those two, two tight end packages that Peterson's going to implement. Haloti Nada in the middle is another big free agent sign. They just got better and better on top of a world championship. Team. Listen, we're and splitting the hairs. They added two good players in the draft, but they did not add a pass rusher. Yeah. And that's the reason they lost the Super Bowl. Well, two very good teams, regardless, clearly. And if you look at this list, again, the top 10 of the post draft power ranking, six of the top 10 are NFC teams. So, Teddy. Uh, which of those stands out? Because I think when you look at this top 10, this could clearly <laughs> shift at any given time. I mean, these are the top 10 teams we believe in the league. I like the New Orleans Saints. And why I like them is because they didn't have any huge free agent signings, but they had a great rookie class last, last year. Ramchek, the offensive tackle, Lattimore, the cornerback, Kamara, the running back, and then Williams at safety. All of those, those four players out of that class, is, they're going to be one year better. This is a team that's extremely young at some positions, but only going to have that experience to get better. Their energy, you could sort of say Drew Brees was a free agent signed because they re-signed him, but still, one of the best in the business, still at quarterback, and the defense is young and going to be continue to improve. Bill? I like the Vikings. They had a great year last year. They added Kirk Cousins, who they think will be better at quarterback. That remains to be seen. They get back Dalvin Cook, who arguably was right there with Carson Wentz for rookie of the year before he got hurt. 
This is a tremendously productive and dynamic back, which they did not have last year when they went very deep into the playoffs. And in addition to that, they bring in Richardson from the Jets to add to an already dominant defensive front seven. So this is a really good team. And I think even though they, uh, the, 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 the Minnesota miracle ended in Philadelphia, and by the way, they beat the Saints last year, uh, the, I, I think they're... I think I would jump them over the Steelers, actually. I think they're a better wow, team than the Steelers. Wow, put them right there in that number three spot. It's, it's so rare to have this massive free agent signing at quarterback when you were one win away from the Super Bowl. It's, true. it's just a different situation, but obviously a lot of folks curious to see how this works out for Kirk And I don't, I don't like to, to joust with Bill because he's a Hall of Famer. We're from the same neighborhood. Um, but I look at the Vikings, and I see an issue just because they have a new offensive coordinator there. They're going to have to make a lot of different adjustments, get comfortable with each other, because we just saw it in Atlanta last year, which is why Atlanta is my pick, by the way, um, in terms of the struggles they went through last year. But now everyone forgets they not only had a new offensive coordinator last year, they had a new defensive coordinator last year. So you got both coordinators in their second years, which I think obviously is going to be better. Instead of worrying about what they're going to do, they're going to be looking at now what can they do better because they've been able to learn the system and get more comfortable with each other. I spoke with a coach in that division last night about Matt Ryan's deal, and he threw out there, he said, of all the quarterbacks in that division right now at this point, Matt Ryan is in his sweet spot in terms of his age and his ability. He's going to be 33 years old last night, and we, we saw the weapons. We talked a lot about this yesterday on the show, the weapons that – Atlanta has added at the wide receiver in Calvin Ridley. And then, of course, we have got Julio Jones, Mohamed Sanu. He's, they've got all the keys and, and all the important um, parts to, to be really good this season. One of those complimentary pieces, Calvin Ridley, that we talked about, Bill, earlier, certainly for this Atlanta offense. And Matt Ryan locked up for five years, and he said the same thing yesterday, that the second year with Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator, will certainly be better. The learning curve shortened up just a bit.